Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how you can spend $35 as a one-time payment to cancel your cable forever and upgrade to 4K streaming with the newest Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. Now, this stick right here was actually released by Amazon quite some time ago, and it promises to convert any projector, monitor, or TV into a smart TV with Alexa controls and Bluetooth capabilities. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and like I said, this video is all about the Fire TV Stick 4K. And starting off, you might be wondering, you know, Mike, why are you reviewing this? This wasn't just released. This is kind of an older release, but honestly, it was because I wanted to buy it for myself and I had a lot of questions. So I looked up many other reviews and I found unboxings. I found just some basic reviews of what it looks like, but I had a lot of questions and I thought, you know what? I have a channel. I might as well review this and share it with you guys. So I want to not only make this a review and tutorial of the device, but I also want to test out some of the claims that Amazon made about this with regards to the Alexa capability. So I want to see how well that actually works. I want to test out the Bluetooth listening, and of course, I want to test out the controls that it claims it can control your television, including your soundbar or your television, with the volume, the mute, and the power button. So just to show you some key differences between the 4K Fire TV Stick and the regular Fire TV Stick, I'll pop up some specs right now. Pause the video and read these if you want. Also, please note that you cannot upgrade the quality of your TV. So if you have a 1080p TV and you plug this in, it does not become a 4K TV. So in the box, you have essentially everything you need to set up. So you have the stick right here, which is relatively small, but it is larger than the other Fire TV stick. So, you know, they say size doesn't matter. What's more important is what it can do. And this one's bigger and it does more. So you guys do the math. This is clearly the more premium product than the regular Fire TV stick. But regardless, if you have a TV that's sunken in and maybe neither of these fit, the good thing is they do both come with this small little dongle, which is great. It fits the whole theme of, you know, 2019, 2020, and I'm sure 2021 will do this as well. It comes with a dongle. So you can get farther away from your TV. It can go into a tighter place as you can kind of see right there. And overall should make it fit in almost every single TV. I haven't really seen any that this does not work with. Then on the bottom, we have our power source right there, which is a micro USB, not that exciting. So a quick disclaimer, I did say this device was $35 because I paid $35 for it, but the price honestly is all over the place on Amazon. Sometimes it's 50, sometimes 25, or anywhere in between. So I'll drop a link in the description for the best price, and I'll be updating that as the price changes. So check that out if you're interested in buying this device. So of course in the box, they also give you a micro USB cable, connects to USB-A on the other side. You plug that into your USB charging block on the wall, and then you have your remote right here. Now your remote is slightly different from some of the older ones, but it's a relatively classic Amazon looking remote here where you have a power button on the top. This actually does not control your device. Instead, it's going to be controlling your television or your sound bar for the power to turn your TV on and off. So it should limit the extra remote you might need. Then you have a microphone right in the center up there. Then you have a microphone button of course, to activate the microphone for when you're using Alexa or any kind of voice commands on here. Then we have this little ring, as I kind of mentioned before in a previous video, these tend to look like iPod rings, but unfortunately they don't do the swirl. It's just a basic up, down, left, right, and center. Then we have the simple layout that is back, home, and a menu option right there. Below that, we have your basic back, play, and forward not really anything spectacular. And then we have the volume up, volume down, and the mute button. That is going to be what also controls your sound. So it's not controlling the device itself, it's controlling the sound output on your TV, or if you connect this to whatever sound bar you have. A quick little aside right here, I actually will be reviewing Disney TV when it comes out. So if you're interested in that, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss that video. So I originally set this up on a 4K monitor and I'll show you the setup in just one second. It's fairly straightforward and shouldn't take that long, maybe five or 10 minutes with the exception of an update if yours needs that. But then after that, I wanna test out something that might answer a question for you. It was a question I originally had and that was, you know, what if you don't have a 4K TV? So what if instead your TV is, you know, 720 or 1080p? You know, will this work with that? And so the answer is yes and I will be testing this out and showing you how the setup looks like on a TV and once we have that, I'll actually be able to test the volume and the power controls to see how well they work. Setup is actually really easy. So we're gonna select English, it's gonna search for networks, we connect to Wi-Fi then, and then you'll see it has a quick update right here as it downloads the latest software. If 
finally it's ready to go. I think that was about 20 minutes worth of updating right there. Maybe my internet's a little bit slow today, but we're gonna go and sign into our Amazon account now. All right, so then it's gonna ask you a couple other things about parental controls. You can enable them and they'll make you set up a pin or something like that. We are going to not do that right now. So next it's gonna be checking if your volume works. So we're just gonna say next. So you can start by adding some different things as is usual. So you wanna add maybe like CW, maybe you wanna add history channel, maybe you wanna add, I don't know, NBA, NFL, add both of those. Um, and then let's just throw in like a couple more things like this. So Spotify is cool that they have that on here as well. I know a lot of people listen to Spotify and it's nice to have that on your Fire TV. So it's gonna download these, uh, install them on your Fire TV right here, but usually you can get started watching something else. So if you're plugging this into a different TV and you wanna reprogram this remote, what you do is go over to settings, go down to device or equipment control right there. And then within equipment control, you can manage equipment and you can go down and change the TV that you have right there. You can see they clearly have lots of options for TV brands. Something I really like about this device is the integration with the app. Now, even though the app is not able to open up Hulu and Netflix and find a bunch of different things and pull up one show or have a bunch of people doing that, what it actually can do really well is offer a keyboard. So this is also acting as a second remote for your device itself. So having a device that you don't have to always worry about where is this remote if you lose it, just use your phone. And on top of that, if you're putting in a lot of passwords or doing a lot of searching, it might be better just to use the keyboard on your phone rather than going up, down, left, right with this, especially because the microphone on this doesn't actually control the keyboard at this time. This device is equipped with Amazon's voice assistant, which is very powerful. As you probably already know, you can control your smart home devices. You can ask it to look up things such as weather or anything you want on the internet, really. Taking a look at the interface now, it's a pretty simple layout. Starting across the top, you have different tabs. So home right here, when you go down then, it brings you into an Amazon original, which automatically starts playing. That's a common theme here. You'll see a lot of Amazon stuff being plugged here. Then you have recent apps, your apps. So you are downloading apps on this that you want to use. Then you can go down again, more prime stuff, prime stuff, prime stuff, uh, some other stuff that's probably prime. And then down here, finally Netflix, way down here, even though this is the most watched app that I have on this device, they you know obviously list their stuff first, which does make sense. I understand why they do that. But if you are not an Amazon member, this could get a little bit annoying. As you go down, there's tons of other stuff to watch, or you can go across the top and you can go over to live. Actually, let's go back to the search button right here or the search icon, you can type in to search, you can use your phone to search or you can use the Alexa button right here and tap to voice search. So tap and hold that and let's look up uh, something that I know is only on Netflix. Watch the blacklist. And so just like that, it actually opens up Netflix, goes into your profile and starts playing the show that you wanted. So Netflix is now integrated with Alexa, which is really nice. You can search that, but you can better search a lot of the prime video type stuff. So then we go over to live and when you go down here, you have a bunch of different live TV apps you can check out. So some of them are free, some of them are paid. Pluto TV, for example, is a free one. Some of the other ones like YouTube TV are paid. I did review almost all of these, so I'll link a playlist in the description so you can check out which ones are the best for you to use. You also have your videos, movies, TV shows, and apps. I don't really go to any of those. Pretty much everything I want is in the home tab. Then there's also settings with many different options here if you want to connect, you know, Bluetooth devices. Open YouTube. Here's YouTube. So you can also open apps with this. Is a Fire TV worth it? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. Amazon Fire TV is a digital media player and it's micro console remote developed by Amazon. What is Apple stock worth right now? When the market closed, Apple traded at 236 US dollars and 41 cents on the Nasdaq. Ups. What's the weather in Tampa? Currently in Tampa, Florida, it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. What time zone is Madagascar in? Madagascar's time zone is Indian slash Antananarivo. Next up, I wanna test out some Bluetooth headphones with this, so it's pretty easy to do. All you do is go into settings, go over and select Bluetooth so you can pair a device. And I will be pairing just you know some regular pair of headphones right here, nothing spectacular. So in conclusion, I think this is a great device. I think it's definitely worth it to buy this for any TV you have, even if it's a smart TV or a projector or a dumb TV. 
this is a great way to you know add the extra smarts in there make it more integrated with your your smart home or your phone or just the internet in general so you don't have to pay for a cable bill every single month instead you can get this download some free tv apps download some you know netflix on there download whatever you want there's tons of different options like thousands of apps or whatever and you can watch tons of stuff on here now how much 4k do i actually watch probably not that much sometimes it's great to have 4k on here but really i would recommend this one over the regular fire tv stick mainly because it's more powerful and it has some better options there kind of future proofing yourself even if you don't have a 4k tv now Maybe you want to get one further on down the road. Maybe you want Dolby Atmos surround sound further on down the road. You know, who knows? Maybe you'll get a promotion at your job and like a big bonus or something, right? So you never know when you're going to buy an upgrade and you don't want to have to go and buy another one of these and have two of them. If the upgrade is only like 10 or $15, I usually just think it's worth it to spend that now. But regardless, the ups and the downs with this device. So I really like the speed and the power of this. I think it's a great interface and I really like the voice remote. I think that's a very quick way to find what you're watching or listening to um, and just open up, you know, open up Spotify, open up Netflix and get right into what you're trying to watch without messing around with typing too much. And actually another plus is that you can type with your phone. So those are the really the biggest pluses I see with this. Some of the drawbacks, if you're not already in the Amazon ecosystem, if you don't already have Prime, it might be a little bit annoying because they do plug their stuff a lot. And honestly, even if you are in their ecosystem, even if you have Prime, they still plug it a lot and they tell you to watch their stuff. They do have some good originals, but I wish they would lay off a little bit with their ads. Of course, it makes sense that they're doing that, you know, plugging all around the interface. But that's what I have to say about this. So guys, what do you think about these two devices, specifically about the 4K version? Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know which one is worth it for you and why. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.